normally these platforms do an awful job telling you does it change to the algorithm. It's usually a bunch of marketers start realizing they're like, oh, algorithm change. Algorithm changes don't happen as often as people think. Updates to the platform that may disrupt performance, that happens a lot. For example, I'll take Facebook. They'll make little changes and that will disrupt the performance of ads. And then we'll find out. So a lot of it is we are live after 10 minutes of technical difficulties all on Megan's end, none of it on my end. I test my equipment and it worked. And we were about to literally cancel this show. I was making the get executive decision. I was like, look, this is going to go on forever. We got work to do. People, people are going to miss us, but we'll just find a later time this week. So, um, let's, let's, uh, let's get to it. Let's kind of roll through it. We're we're 11 minutes behind. Megan, how was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Can you hear me? Yes. Let's not do this for all the listeners. Again, we just spent 10 minutes doing this. I hear you loud and clear. Um, and I've always heard you. It was you couldn't hear me. So I had a good weekend. How about you? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, one really bad night with, uh, with the baby. But aside from that, the next night, I think I went to bed at 8.30 p.m., which is like the first time since I was like maybe like 7. Went to bed at 8.30 and I woke up at 6. So solid sleep. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm making a big, big decision, by the way. Um, you're going you're gonna to get this. You know the map that we have of how my days are spent? Yeah. We're going to have to redo it with a newborn because it just doesn't work. Okay. So here's a good lesson for everyone. When you build your schedule and you're like, okay, look, I'm, this the schedule. I'm going to stick to it. This can be my routine. Something bad happens. Don't try to fit like everything into it. Adjust to the reality of your situation. So. I mean, eight hours of sleep consecutive, just going to be hard to do. So mm -hmm. because of that, I know how my body reacts to no sleep. So we're going to have to adjust somehow. Mm -hmm. um, so I am uh, kind of mapping out what those new days are going to kind of look like. So um, ready to roll um, and make sure that I'm optimized and take care of everything. But aside from that, um, let's go. You ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, all right. Our first question is, how do you communicate with your kids about the demand of your work and the importance of entrepreneurship? And this is from Derek. Um, my kids are too young. Yeah. For, for, for me to communicate those. Um, yeah, they're, they're a little bit too young for me to start demonstrating values of business and entrepreneurship. Look, there was a great quote that I read a long time ago that, you know, your kids will remember not what you tell them, but what you show them. Mm -hmm. And I think my father was a perfect example of this or still is he's alive. So not a was, but an is a perfect example of, you know, just showing me work ethic and showing me how he treats people. I remember uh, I used to walk through in the hospital, my dad's a doctor. I used to walk to the hospital, and even the janitors would stop and say hi to my dad. And I'd be like, "Wow, like the guy who cleans up the garbage knows you." Like, like, and and like they all would tell me how great my dad is. I remember, um, you know, I parked in the in the doctor's parking lot one time to pick up my dad one time, mm -hmm. and he gave me his pass, and he's like, "Oh, um, you know, oh, you're his son. Oh, I just want to tell you, you know, we love him." And so it's just like you remember those type of things and how you treat people. So, you know, just little things like from from charity, from demonstrating that, from showing that we're giving to charity, from, um, you know, just the importance of work and what work does. I, I, look, I do my best. They're young. They they don't care about a lot of stuff. They have no clue what I do for a living. Um, I, my own parents really have no concept of what I do for a living. Uh, you know, it's hard when people ask you, what do you do? And you're like, well, it depends. Um, so, you know, demonstrating the, what's, what was the question? How do I demonstrate the importance of entrepreneurship? Or, uh, yeah. Or how do you just communicate with your kids about it? Yeah, I don't yet. But 
but they'll they'll get they'll get to it. They know daddy goes to work, daddy goes to his office. Um and then in terms of in terms of um like everything else, what was the next part of the question? Um how do you communicate with your kids about the demands of your work uh, and the importance of entrepreneurship? Uh, um, not there yet. Don't know. Don't know how I'm going to handle it. We're off to a rough start this morning, by the way. I can't remember <laughs> questions. You took 15 minutes to get your audio to work. Not not a great start, but um, too young. Uh, I don't I don't have an answer to that question yet. I, I'll better suited to answer that in a few years when, when they start yeah. to grasp it. Uh, yeah, they just know daddy goes to work. Daddy sometimes travels for business. Daddy mm -hmm. comes home with a present. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think, I think soon, you know, my hope is Ryan gets to an age soon where like he'll start coming with me and he'll come to these events to me. He'll watch daddy speak on stage. He'll watch, you know, daddy talk to a group. He'll wa he'll like come to events to learn with me. Um, and, and, and make it like a trip out of it and an experience. Uh, but aside from that, I don't really have an answer yet. I'm not there yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one is from Kristen. Uh, what do you think is the best way to stay up to date with new changes in online marketing? Uh, for example, any changes to the algorithm or like, uh, platform changes in general? Uh, normally these platforms do an awful job telling you there's a change to the algorithm. It's usually a bunch of marketers start realizing that there was a tweak and then we start pushing what happened, what happened, what happened. And they're like, oh, algorithm change. Algorithm changes don't happen as often as people think. Updates to the platform that may disrupt, you know, performance, that happens a lot. Like, for example, I'll take Facebook. They'll make little changes and that will disrupt the performance of ads and then we'll find out oh well they were just updating a bunch of different things so a lot of it is one we're lucky because we have a rep and we and they keep us up to date with a lot of things but there's so many different newsletters that you could probably reach out to and on twitter that reach out to like i mean who do i read uh john loomer very good for for facebook for facebook stuff like he he was very quick with updates that come out mm -hmm. um uh, kind of let's see let's see what I read uh, I mean social media marketing uh, social media today is another good one uh, search engine journal I mean there's a bunch that that I, I honestly I had this list of things that I read every single morning and now I just don't read them anymore it's just I don't really like my team, our team, our media buying team is really good at keeping up to date with a lot of those things. Me too. Um, but I'm up to date on the no of the macro of what's going on. I think that's an important thing to be. So, you know, sometimes I'll skim through that and, and read, but most of the time it's our rep that, that kind of informs us a, a lot of different changes. Okay. So the honest, honestly, by the way, that's the beauty of having an agency. So everyone thinks, you know, an agency is, you're paying this one person that you're talking to to do all that. No, you're paying a team and you're paying someone who sees things from a macro. So there's pros and cons. Like, don't get me wrong. I think there's times where you want to go in-house and you don't need an agency. But the definite pro of having an agency is we look at things from a macro, so many different accounts. So if there's a problem in one account, we look to see if the problem exists in other accounts. If it does, we know it's a, a widespread problem. Mm -hmm. So we can make a decision. If you're working on just one account, it's hard because anytime performance dips, you think there's a problem with your ads or what you're doing and you don't know enough to be like, hey, no, looks like there's a problem here. Um, let's take a look. And then there's like, um, there's another site. I'll share this. It's called status.fb.com or metastatus.com. So metastatus.com will tell you like literally if there are any uh, status or, or, out, or outages of meta platform so you could kind of see what's going on. Okay. But the algorithm doesn't really change all that often because I think a lot of people are under that impression. Yeah, um, the algorithm doesn't change that much. It's, I mean, sure, like people talk about it, but people confuse the algorithm with performance and whatnot. And mm -hmm. 
I mean, the algorithm is not, not drastically. I, look, it's a learning thing. So I guess technically it's always changing. But I wouldn't cite, oh, algorithm changes, algorithm changes, algorithm. I think that's one thing that people just latch onto because it's an easy excuse. Oh, it's out of my control. It must be in the algorithm change. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, what trends or innovation do you feel are currently shaping the future of online marketing? And this is from Scott. Uh, I think we're seeing a push away from direct response of the like, Hey, uh, you know, Hey, we get like, learn how to double your sales in the next 15 days or your money back, like type of thing. I think we're seeing a lot more, uh, marketers are getting smarter. Uh, the gurus are getting dumber. Um, uh, sorry, the, the audience is getting smarter. Gurus are getting dumber. Um, marketers are getting lazier. So I think we're seeing this push of like the ones that are working are the ones that are are providing enough value and playing a long game and building community and building that trust and respect and building that that almost that that like flywheel omnipresence of like stay in my in my niche and eventually I'll do business maybe become a customer and, and we're getting away of like everything being so transactional like the ones that could do that the ones that could play that game the longest are, are just going to have staying power so you always you always look at this like do you want to outspend your competition or do you want to outlive your competition so if you just want to be direct response and you want to be transactional off every little thing then you're gonna to have to spend money to do it if you want to outlive then it takes time and effort and you build a brand but i mean you're laughing in in three to five years everyone looks at these brands that pop up and they're like man i wish i had a brand like that well i think you're a liar and you're full of shit because you had the opportunity to build something like that but you got so short sighted and didn't play the long game and you got so uh in love with instant profit right off the bat money off the acquisition uh profitable acquisition right out of the gate uh don't care about your customers just how much money can we bank um and you did that and you didn't build that brand you didn't build that community you didn't build all that so you know you see it but you're not willing to do the work that the that these guys did to do it and then you're wondering Hey, how come they don't have to advertise or spend as much as I do? How come, you know, they have loyal customers and we don't? How come they're doing all that stuff? You could have, you could have, but you didn't. And so I think we look at people a lot of times and we compare ourselves to people who are ahead of us without any context. And, but even more so it's disrespectful because you're just looking at that brand or that person and saying, they're there. I want to be there too, but you're not willing to pay the price to get to that spot. So until you're willing to pay that price and do what they're doing to stay in that position, don't talk. Okay. Okay. All right. This next one is from Amy. Uh, what is the best way for a local business to market to their local community? I mean, uh, aside from ads and, and Google ads, I'll take that away because um, I'll give an, a, a little bit of a out of the box answer because that's the typical response. We're going to do Google or or. I, I mean, you could go to every single local business. Let's say you want a coffee shop. You could go to your barber shop next door and be like, hey, you know, I want to do something with you guys. How about. I put a card in here for a free cup of coffee and you could put cards in my place for, you know, 10 bucks off a haircut or a free first haircut mm -hmm. in, or, in order to build our list. And you build with your local community, plan local community events. Uh, I remember we were consulting for this client one time that was opening a restaurant, uh, like a, a bar slash restaurant, sports bar slash restaurant. And one of the things that we worked with them to do was build, like they wanted to get the whole community involved. So I said, do an event for their first responders. Okay. So police, firemen, like all, all those people where they could come and eat for free, do like a whole barbecue for them outside. And they did it and they got like, they were in the press, they got TV coverage, they got all that stuff that you'd have to pay a lot of money to do. And it was great. They gave back and guess what? You know, they, they made it every, every like Tuesday night, I think, uh, first responders or whatever, they got like a free, like, um, 
side dish or whatever it was, uh, whatever, I forget what we, we worked on to, to do, but they got massive press that way. And then guess what? It's always filled. So you're bringing your friends in, you get a free dessert. Let's say if you're a first responder, you've got to order a meal. It's the best thing to do. Offer everyone in, offer everyone around you a uh, free, something free on their birthday. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your coffee shop, give a free dessert or like a free like muffin yeah. on, on the birthday. Guess what? They're going to go buy a cup of coffee too. If, you, if you're a restaurant, give free dessert on their birthday. They're going to come in and buy the food. They're going to bring the whole party in and do all that stuff. Collect emails from people who come into your business. Stay in touch with them. Stay on top of the on, on local stuff. Go in, sponsor local events, sponsor your local, uh, a local sports team. There's so many different ways that I think you could do it. Um, and the ones that I, I've seen some really cool brands do this. You've seen amazing. You want to look at a good case study of local businesses that that thrived. Like, go look at the ones that that thrived during COVID. Mm-hmm. That's what your whole business model around. Those are some of the best marketers. And yet we give credit to the ads and whatnot. Those are people who were about to be shut down and they pivoted. And while everyone else shut down, every restaurant shut down, these people found a way to to pivot a little bit and stay on top of it, whether it's baskets, whether it's food, prep food to bring to, you know, you could deliver to home or whatnot. Like they were just so smart and savvy. Mm-hmm. Like those are the people that are really, really talented. Awesome. I would study those people. Okay. Um, okay. So now the nine question of the week. And all right. So what is your least favorite part of being an entrepreneur and a parent? Uh, being a parent, my least favorite part is having to discipline my kids. I, I don't like, yeah, I, I understand that. it. <laughs> I understand it. I understand it's normal. I, I hate yelling at my kids, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't like doing it. Um, you know, they're cute, they're young, and you know, like I don't like seeing them cry. And I'm usually I'm usually a softy. Like I'll I'll come out of the gate strict and then like they'll cry and I'll be the first to be like, come here, come here, come here, come come give yeah. me a hug. Um, which kind of defeats the purpose. Uh but <laughs> they're young and and I love them and and so I think that's the that's the hardest part. Um that and being away from them. So I think as an entrepreneur, I don't have set hours. So that kind of ties Mm -hmm. into both. I don't have set hours. So it's, it's, you know, if I have to do work and I have to travel and I have to go, I have to leave my family, I have to do a lot of different things and sacrifice things. So I think that's the hardest part. If I just worked a nine to five, Mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have that. At the same time though, entrepreneurship gives me the blessing that I don't have a nine to five. Mm -hmm. I could just go spend time with my family and, and, and do those things. So a uh, double-edged sword, but the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur, so dad is, a, a being a parent is disciplining. Uh, entrepreneur, the hardest part, I would say, hmm, it's a good question. Or just your least favorite part, not necessarily the hardest part, your least favorite part. Uh, uh, that the brain doesn't shut off, you know, yeah. I, I think, I think that that's a hard one. Uh, I'm getting a lot, lot better at it, but you know, it's, it's, you worry, right? So it's, it's your business. I have employees. I worry like if the business goes under, Megan has to go find another job. Um, the team has to go find another job. Like, you know, like you have, you have, you have obligations that are not just for yourself. And as you build and you want to, you want to create that, that stuff, you worry about those things, everything, the responsibility, if you're a good entrepreneur, it all starts and stops with you. So it's always your fault. It's like everything's on you. The buck stops with you, um, which is a very liberating feeling too, because you're in complete control. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the brain not shutting off at times, I think that's been the hardest part for me to learn how to navigate through. And I'm, I think I'm doing a better job than I was two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Um, well, that's all we got. That's sweet. Awesome. Well, happy, happy Monday or whenever you're watching this replay. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you have any thoughts about this episode 
let me know. And if you're mad at Megan for being 15 minutes late today, let her know too um, that she should do tech text before we go live. But aside from that, happy Monday. Bye, everyone. Bye.